Throughout the universe, there are two trillion galaxies. We live in one, the Milky Way. Each of these galaxies are filled with hundreds of billions of stars, each with their own planets, just like ours. These numbers are crazy and big and don't mean much to us humans, but all you need to know is there are practically infinite planets. This means the craziest planets you can dream up probably exist somewhere out there. And today, I want to show you the five craziest planets we've discovered so far. So buckle in, because these planets are beautiful, mind-blowing, and perhaps even a little bit scary. But most importantly, they are real. These are real places in the universe. Welcome to Kepler-16b, the planet with two suns. Now, this planet has earned the nickname Tatooine in real life because of its astounding similarity to the Star Wars planet Tatooine. Kepler-16b is around the same size as Saturn and is just 245 light years away from us. This was the first planet ever discovered in a circumbinary orbit, which is just a fancy way of saying this planet actually orbits two suns. This means that if you were to go outside on the planet, you would see two stars moving across the sky during the day. I mean, can you imagine what a double sunset would look like? Now, while it would be awesome if we could live there, this planet actually orbits outside of the habitable zone, meaning it would be too cold for liquid water to exist on the surface. Sorry, Luke. This next planet is so terrifying that it has been given the nickname, the Planet of Terror. To the untrained eye, this planet looks inviting. It's a nice bright blue color and looks relatively calm. But any space traveler who confused it for the friendly skies of Earth would be badly mistaken. The weather on this planet is deadly. I'm talking 5,400 mile per hour widths. That is seven times the speed of sound. This would throw any visiting spacecraft off course and cause them certain doom. Do you want to know something even worse? The wind wouldn't just blow you around aggressively. It would cause death by a thousand cuts. Literally. The planet rains 500 degree glass. Imagine clouds of glass shards flying towards you at 5,400 miles per hour. I don't know about you, but... I'll be skipping on the trip to the planet of terror. Up next, we have the planet that most astronomers refer to as Super Saturn. This outrageous planet has rings 640 times the size of Saturn's rings. It is just 400 light years away from Earth and defies expectations for what we previously thought was possible. Well, if the rings are 640 times the size of Saturn's rings, let's imagine what it might look like if we replaced Saturn with Super Saturn in our solar system. It would look a little something like this. The rings would be so bright that they're easily visible at night and they would be significantly larger than the full moon. This planet is looking a bit more familiar. Kepler-186f is often called Earth's cousin because of its striking similarities to Earth. The planet is around 500 light years from Earth and is only about 10% larger. Perhaps even more exciting is that the planet orbits within the habitable zone around its star, meaning in theory, life could exist on the planet. But here's where things start to get weird. The star that the planet orbits is much cooler and much redder than our sun. And this means that the majority of the photons hitting the planet are within the red wavelengths of light. Now, because of this, the photosynthesis in plants on this planet could have evolved drastically different to those on Earth, changing the plants from a green color, like you might see on Earth, to a striking red color. Just imagine forests of bright red trees, the lettuce in your burger a bright red color. In fact, this idea was so interesting to NASA that they created a poster that reads Kepler-186f, where the grass is always redder on the other side. Not every planet has a star. Some aren't a part of a solar system like us. They're all alone, and they're known as rogue planets. These planets don't orbit. They simply drift along through the cold, dark depths of space all alone. On this planet, it likely rains, but these rains are not made of water. Instead, they are bands of molten iron. 
We still don't fully understand how these planets come to exist, but our best theories are that they are either failed stars or planets that have been ejected from baby systems right after smashing into another planet. As they drift into the darkness, their molten cores begin to cool, eventually leaving them cold, dark, and alone, drifting through space. If one were to drift into our solar system, it could collide with planets causing mass destruction. Or it could even gravitationally pull on planets, causing them to be thrown out of the solar system. The chances are, of course, low. But if one was headed for us, we're not sure there's much we can do. These planets are just as real as Earth. And in some cases, there is a very real possibility that life could exist on them. I mean, we are just a collective of relatively smart primates that live on a small blue world drifting through the seemingly silent universe. For as long as we've existed, we've looked to the stars and dreamt about what might be out there. Now, I believe in aliens, and I believe they're out there somewhere. But for now, it's just us, and maybe 